So oh, yeah. Raul in uh, Harlington has been on waiting for a long time, says he can prove intelligent design uh, and something about Constellation. So Raul, thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I've been listening and uh, <clears throat> I hope my question is uh, not too boring, actually, compared to the other guys that have been talking. But um, uh, one thing, you know, like, I'm south of you. I'm about 350 miles south of you. Uh, I'm in the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah. And when you walk out at night mm -hmm. and you look at up, up at the stars, um, what mm -hmm. you see is uh, the random stars. They're up there. Some people say, well, it's the Big Bang Big Bang Theory did that. Uh, Big Bang uh, did that. But when, what about, just a quick question, because I know other people want to go on. Uh, the, the constellation Orion, oh, the constellation, the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, the and we're going to get soon in the summer, the constellation Scorpio. Those are designs up there. How do those get up there? They're not designs up there. That's something that people look up and they draw, they connect the dots and they make a pattern in their mind and they share that pattern with other people. But those stars are, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's only from this one particular position or roughly in this vicinity that you could see those. If you were somewhere else in the galaxy or somewhere else in the universe, you would not see those same things. Yes, sir. Rob, do you ever look up at the clouds and see, see animals Perfect. or faces or objects like in the clouds? Johnny, okay, yep. of course, of course. But if you're going to tell right. me that when you see, look at the constellation Orion, and you're going to say that it's just up, uh, you know, connect a dot type thing, that is a figure. You cannot be that blind. A rough figure. Hey, hang on, hang on. Let me finish. We cannot be that what? Yeah. Blind. Yeah. Yes. Is it's there, people. We're it's we're not the ones we're not the ones who are blind. We are the ones whose eyes have been opened. Because rather than just taking things at first blush and having seeing this collection, the collection the stars are there, and you can go yep yep yep. There's that that there's that that that, and we're going to call that Orion. But what we've done is we've looked further than the surface issue uh, to understand what we're actually looking at. And meanwhile, that, which which yeah. God which God do you believe in, Raúl? Well, uh, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That, that sounds and like. That sounds I like think a, they're honorable. I think you have said some stuff no. against them. Hang on, they I'm have never done Raul, anything to Raul, you or harmed you. Raul, Raul, I'm. Yes, sir. Is that so? So it's some sort of Christian God. Yes, yes, and I'm glad because oh, if he oh, wasn't, and he yeah. has the power to put those stars up there, what do you think he'd be doing to you right now if he wasn't good? Your God couldn't so much okay. as give me a fucking hangnail. But the point here is that why would the Christian God put up a don't, bunch don't of... Use, you, you, you demean yourself by using the F word, sir. No, sir. You demean yourself... And your show. And your you show. Demean, you demean and yourself. Your show. And Johnny, Johnny I'm gonna is nodding his head. I'm going to mute you. I will take you off mute when I'm done talking. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm laughing a no. little bit at what you're saying, Raul. I'm sorry. Um, I, are I, there I, other design? cultures in the world? Hang on, I had to mute him. I had to mute him, and I want to focus. Okay. First of all, no, Raul, you demean yourself by pretending that words have magical powers and that by uttering some sort of word, I have actually done some sort of offense. Um, but the truth is, why would the Christian God manipulate the stars in such a way that they give us symbols for other religions, false religions? Why, If Christianity is true, then why would we have... All of these other gods, the entire zodiac chart in the heavens, is your God trying to confuse us? Um, sir, are you hearing me? Yes. Can you hear me? Well, I'm off. I'm off? Yeah. Well, you're, you're okay. You can, you can have, to, oh, to me, it was a simple question, sir. I asked you a question. There's a design up there. There's a design up there. I don't know what the, you know, no, you want the to not know. in your head. Are you going to answer my question or not? I'm sorry. I had a bad experience yesterday with my heart, so I had to go to the hospital and all that. So I'm sorry. I missed your question. I'm a bit nervous right now. I'm sorry. Okay. The question is, oh. if, if, if the God of Christianity is real and what you're talking about with these, these astrological constellations are real, why would the God of Christianity fill the sky with symbols and signs of other false gods? 
because we've made them false gods. He didn't do that. That's just something he did with his power, because it takes a lot of power. Whether we want to say that's, uh, you know, some sort of weird thing, and another religion says it, it, uh, it's just the zodiac. It's just the proof of God and his power. The zodiac and is if, the proof of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says to stay away from soothsayers. Oh, uh, y yes, yes, you're absolutely right about that. You know I'm but right. That's because, I know this shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, uh, I, I, I've studied know? the Bible. I know that the constellations are not something that anybody could possibly interpret as a God creating them. Because, first of all, all of those stars are of different ages and different for formations. We, they're, they're at different distances from us. And if you viewed them from somewhere else, they would look different. It, that is exactly my point. Because from the face of the Earth, a human being can look up there and say, boy, that's the design, that's no. the figure. Well, yes, a human, being, a human being it's can in fact the say that. Theory. A human being Sorry. can in fact say that, but they would not be telling the truth. The fact that you see a pattern in the stars is no different from you seeing a pattern, as Johnny pointed out, in the clouds. When you, when you look at a cloud and it looks like a bunny rabbit, do you think God made that cloud look like a bunny rabbit for you? I'm talking about stars. I, I understand. You can look We're, at a no, floor no, and you can... Raul, 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 you're not talking about stars. You're talking about patterns. And I asked about a pattern. When you see a bunny rabbit in a cloud, do you think God made that cloud look like a bunny rabbit for you? No, the air did. And why would you think that God put together a pattern in the stars for you? Because they What's are different? big... They are trillions of miles apart, and this everybody, I mean, even a child can look up there, Matt, and see it's its not random. It is. It's it, not well, random. You're it's correct. It's not a random it's thing. structured by physics, but that doesn't mean that it's a pattern intentionally put in the sky. But for Raul, well, I, I don't want to insult you, but, but, your, but your, your rationale on this is, is, is stunning me at how off it is. I would encourage oh, Johnny, you to Johnny. go back to. I would encourage you to go back to, uh, I don't know, an astronomy book or research the ability of human beings to recognize patterns in in non-designed things. Uh, it's there's a I, I don't know what it's what's it called, Matt. Do you know the Paradalia. the name of that uh, Paradalia? Thank you. you Look that is in design. Our, our, brain, our brains are pattern do recognition. Some, do some research. Our brains are pattern recognition machines, and we try to look for things that are familiar. It is completely unsurprising that we would look up there. Now, first of all, if you look at something like Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, it's a couple of stars here with something that becomes like uh, an arcing handle. But the ancients looked at that and saw a bear, not a Big Dipper, a bear. This is what they envisioned when they saw it. And this mo m m uh, this changes over the years as people look at it, and now it becomes something you see as a Big Dipper. But it's the only reason you see it that way is because somebody said, hey, look, see those stars right there? They form something that looks a little bit like a Big Dipper. If God, if God were trying to send a message, what message does that send? I don't think he was sending a message. It was just a proof of his existence. Okay, how does that prove his existence? Because he's the the Almighty is the only one that has the power to move those things but, in such a degree that we can see a figure from the face of the earth. It's so simple. No, no, hang the on. The question you should be asking me. The question you should be asking me is Raul, 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 stop. If I were to take fifty dice and toss them out on the floor in the living room. Do you think you could find patterns in those dice that are similar to constellations? No, you would have to walk and pick up the dice and put no. them in a figure. That's what no, you'd have to do. No, sir. No. To get a figure out of them. Oh my God. This is, this is, it's like you're, it's like you're refusing to acknowledge the obvious. If, if I, if I took 50 dice and threw them out on the floor in the living room, so they spread all, all over, and you sat on the couch, you don't think that it would be possible to look at those dice and say, that one looks like a smiley face? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and do you think you could also look at those dice on the floor and say, ooh, 
over there, that one looks a little bit like a Big Dipper. Yes. Yeah. And so if I can throw dice out and they form patterns that people can see, yes. then stars naturally moving around a galaxy, you can find patterns there. Are there patterns that you and I could spot in the sky that aren't part of the Zodiac? Yes. And, and I could show you a pattern in the sky and say, see that little cluster right there? It's not a part of the Zodiac, but that looks a little like a, a, pu a dog face, a puppy's face. And you would look at it and you would say, yeah, that does look a little like a dog's face, right? Yes. And so yes. If, that, if that pattern is up there and you and I are the first ones to find it and it's not part of the Zodiac, is that pattern proof of God? Uh, no, if if you don't want to believe in God, uh, I'm just saying that when you have certain designs that are very, very big, uh, trillions of miles, the That's odds really are that those hard. stars, you know, see what I'm saying? But, okay, if you, uh, we're not going anywhere with this one, I guess. You, you're uh, right. God is love. God is love. God is mercy. And God is Johnny, love, huh? we're talking about. So are you okay sorry. with slavery? Is slavery love? That that I know I, I know you the other guy was talking about that uh, in Jesus Christ said this thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart heart mind and soul with all your love your neighbor as yourself yeah so I have you, no evidence. you shouldn't have slaves. why was there why no 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 you don't get to do that no sir you don't get to do that you don't get to don't take. Get to a book that says you can have slaves and then took a different passage that says nothing about slavery and infer that it's opposed to slavery. That is not, not reasonable. Okay, Matt, you're right about that. You're right. You're right, Matt. Where does the Bible say you shouldn't have slaves? I don't... I think, like the other young man said, you should not mistreat slaves. Paul said he was a slave to Christ. That's, that's a metaphor. That's a metaphor... The Bible says you can beat your slaves. Is that moral? What? No, it's not. No, it's not. It is wrong. So then it's why wrong. does the Bible Justice. why does the Bible say you can do something that you think is wrong? I don't I don't I don't read the Bible. I read it many years and there are some stuff in it that I just don't do anymore. And one of them is I don't read it anymore. I don't go to church anymore. Raul But I believe in God. When 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 Jesus, do you believe that Jesus came to the earth? Yes, sir. Why? Do you think that, if, well, why is yeah, one question, but, uh, and it's a good one, but do you think that if Jesus were God, that he should have tried to um, correct some of the moral ambiguities and moral um, crimes from the Old Testament. Uh, in fact, he did, Johnny. In fact, he did what? what it, the, the, in fact, he, he did. That's why he brought in the new covenant. No, no. What did the Jesus do? He brought in yeah, and what he, did he called do? himself exactly. the, new, the new covenant. Okay, he but didn't hurt anybody. He did. He fed the the five thousand. He walked on water. He didn't he hurt anybody. The dead. He he did. He did not hurt anyone. Did he threaten people? With the, did he threaten people with the scourge that he made and chased them around in, uh, on his own? The fact that he might not have missed doesn't mean that he wasn't running around with the scourge that he handmade himself, threatening people. Yes, he yes he did. But he so, he was so saying violent. that they had made. Jesus is, is advocating you, for you violence as a I solution. Think, I don't, yes, sir. I don't think you guys hate hate the God that much. I think you hate religion. No, it's That's I don't hate problem. either one of them. I find all of it, no. I hate find all of it repugnant, but none of it can be demonstrated to be true. Right. With yeah. regard to the little whip, they were stealing. They were. It's human nature. God is good. Mankind is not good. All of us. Okay, then was Jesus was Jesus good or not? Yes, he was. He fed people, was, he was healed Jesus people, perfect? healed people. Was Jesus perfect? And he was yes, he was and, the and so son it, of God. He point, was actually God. And so a perfect solution 
is to make a scourge and chase people, the money lenders, out of the temple. Uh, yes, sir. But the question you guys should be that asking is: that is what the all-knowing, all-powerful? That is what the all-knowing, all-powerful governor of the of the universe suggests is violence as well, a solution. No, he divested himself of his glory and he ran them out. But the question you guys should be asking, I think it's a fair thing to say, is it isn't if God exists, is why isn't he here with us I, right I've now? Been, I've been asking that question forever because the best argument for the fact that there is no God is the argument from divine hiddenness. Why are you calling in to defend a God? Why doesn't God defend himself? No, because he will come back and is allowing, like many have said, free moral agency for you. To, we live our lives, we, we do good or bad, and, and uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go that. Um, in other words, if we do good, it'll be better for us. But eventually Christ will come and set up his government here. And then we will this is a well have, Raul, have a good Raul, we've talked about this a lot. On, on the show, okay, but I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Sorry. Does, okay. no, I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off. And I, I'm sorry. You got a little bit, you got a little bit preachy there for a moment, but uh, no harm done. Um, does, uh, are you of the opinion that if God were to appear on, uh, to every single human being, let's say once a year, January 1st, or let's make it Christmas, uh, December 25th, and said, I'm here. I'm real. I want you to love each other and believe in me. And uh, that that would somehow violate uh, a human being's free will. Uh, no, uh, uh, no, it would not violate it, uh, a human being's free will. We will always have free will. Okay. Uh, and well, but so it wouldn't, it wouldn't violate human beings free will. So <laughs> why doesn't God do that? If because, if if belief because, in God's because, existence is the most important thing for a human being to possess in order to preserve their their soul or to possess an afterlife in paradise, then why doesn't God make it an awful lot easier to uh, come to know God and believe in God? Well, because we would be the first ones to say, atheists would be the first ones to say. I never had my chance to be myself. You made me do this. You made me do that. So it's, Why? It's no. Like a father. No, I would still be free. I would still be free to uh, to say I don't believe uh, that I should follow your words, right? If God appeared to me, well, I could still say, yeah, you're here, but uh, tough nuts, baby cakes. I'm doing what I want to do, right? Well, first of all, I bring no accusations against the Lord. That's number That's one. That's not what I'm asking. That's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is this. If God appeared to me, I could still choose not to follow whatever he told me to do, correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So why doesn't God then just appear to everybody? Since it wouldn't violate anyone's free will, why make it such a puzzle? Why look up to the constellations and have to distill from... Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, Draco, or whatever the heck, that God exists? Why do I have to look at the trees? And even though there are naturalistic explanations as to how organisms develop over time from single cell organisms to multicellular organisms, why do I have to conceive of a maximally great being in order to come to know God? Why do I have to have a Damascus, Damascus Road experience? Why do I have to have all these esoteric disguised, difficult to understand, and easy to misinterpret experiences. Why can't I just have God appear before me and say, hey, love your neighbor as yourself directly to me, not to somebody thousands of years ago, not to people that can't prove that that's exactly what they saw, that they have visions, but there's no physical evidence of it. Why does it have to go through all these hoops if the most important thing is belief? Doesn't it just well, look like when, people are? Please, sorry, I talked enough. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Well, uh, he actually did come to the earth, and what did we do to him? We murdered him. How do you know that? I'm sorry. How do you know that? Josephus. 
Well, in the book of Josephus, first okay, there's, uh, there's another the thing as a book of Josephus. Josephus was a historian I'm sorry. Who, who was <laughs> born sorry. long after Jesus would have been here if Jesus existed at all. So Josephus has nothing more than hearsay testimony. No. Okay, okay. He well, says people well, are saying that this guy I, existed. Oh my God! You guys are uh, you guys are rough, man. You guys are really rough. I've been and, uh, the show because we I, love you, Raul. 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 Look, Raul. I, I still have an echo here on my thing. The book said I was a most Christian for fifteen plus years, or for the majority of my life. I've been hosting this show for fifteen years. Yeah, I'm well aware of, of what's the the arguments here. It's not that we're being rough. It's you're coming up with things. Either constellations, which I, I thought the dice example would would solve that, or now you're suggesting, hey, Josephus proves that Jesus came down here and died. No, Josephus doesn't. Josephus wasn't wasn't alive at that time. So all you have is a historian telling us what other people believed. And even if there was somebody named Jesus who was killed for claiming to be God and and, mur and murdered on a on a cross, that still doesn't prove that he was God. Matt, Matt, can I say one thing yeah. regarding that question? The reason that they believed and we still believe in Christ was because of the miracles that he did. You he have did no miracles. evidence. You have you have no evidence of miracles. What miracle can you prove that Jesus did? Uh, well, there was there's a Roman. I don't know who he was who said there's this man doing miracles. But if you guys don't believe any of that, okay, okay. I appreciate the call. I mean, what can I say, man? You guys, you guys. Uh, I thought it would be. You would say, well, I hadn't thought of that. You know that uh, there's, the, I don't know, the 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 constellations, and I thought it would be just. You wouldn't have to get angry about it. You know, we're not angry. That's what I thought. Can I say? If I, if yeah. I call, can, I, can I say? Can I say something? Roll, Matt. I think. And I certainly appreciate that you called in because you wanted to have a conversation. You wanted to share your thoughts. You wanted to explore this subject with, with some folks that you thought might have an interesting perspective. You thought that we were worth your time and that the viewers and the audience might uh, enjoy it and might get something out of it. Um, it may not have gone the way that you wanted it to go, um, we may not have convinced you that that your beliefs are are maybe insufficiently founded, and you may not have convinced us that the that the constellations are proof. But we're having the conversation anyway, and um, I enjoyed it. I I really do think you need to look into that um, that phenomenon of the mind of pattern yes. seeking. Because I think yes, that might go a long way to explaining the mystery of the constellations for for you, perhaps. Yes. And, the, and the other thing is, right. don't assume just because. So first of all, there's a lot of problems with the the lag in the phone system and everything else, and trying to talk over each other. And cell phones don't do good duplex, so you're probably on a cell phone, and so you didn't even hear me trying to interrupt at certain points. And I've got to put people on mute. Don't assume that we're angry. Um, le legitimately, no. I've heard. Like, there's nothing that came out of your mouth that I haven't heard at least a dozen times in the last 15 years. And these were all things that countless other people have thought of and, and for, for centuries. But to, say, to suggest that, you know, a lot of people are, are like I used to be when I was a Christian. And that was, I believed that this book, the Bible was inspired by God. This this actually is my Bible from 1981 onward. And so it's got all my highlights and everything else. It even has a, uh, a sticker here that I did in 1987 when we were at Camp Windermere, although it may not show up well on screen because uh, I have green screen. Mm -mm. I believe that this book was inspired by God and I believe that everything in it was true and useful for teaching because that's what the book says. And then much, much later in life after... 20 some odd years, uh, nearly 30 or 25 plus years of believing it, I started to find out that, hey, there are things in here that aren't particularly moral. There are things in here that have no evidence to support that they're true outside of this book. Like, for example, who wrote the book, The Gospel of Matthew? Right. I, uh, 
I don't know, sir. I'm sorry. Nobody, know. nobody knows. That's the point. And and kudos to you for, for getting that. Like if you open up a new international version or you go to earlychristianwritings.com or anything else, it will point out that we have no idea who wrote Matthew, who wrote Mark. We don't know. Who wrote Luke? We don't know. Who wrote John? We're not completely sure. And so you have the four gospels, the, the ones that are telling the story of Jesus, three of which, which tell the same story and borrow from each other, and one which is significantly different. And nobody knows who the authors of these were. And all the best dating methods show that these things were written decades, if not an entire century afterwards for some of the other uh, books. It's the things that people are taught and told in church and the assumptions that people make about the way the world works under a religious model simply are not true, are not supported by evidence. And this is all we're trying to get to on the show. You are not the first person to call in about constellations or to think that Josephus proves Jesus. And, and not, none of us are angry about it. If anything, I, I am genuinely frequently frustrated, both with the problem of trying to have a, a conversation over the internet, but also that I can ask someone a question, a straightforward question, and get two different answers, depending on whether or not their brain is trying to protect them from discovering that they're wrong. And this is why I did the dice example on the floor, because yes. finding that face, that dog's face in the dice or in the sky, to say that this pattern that we spotted is significant and proof of God, but the other pattern that we spotted is not proof of God, demonstrates that neither of those patterns on its own can be proof of God. There needs to be something else. That was all I was trying to get to. I'm sorry if you thought we were angry, but we yeah. completely run out of time, and I got to let you go. And uh, call us back another time. We'll, we'll try try to do it again better. Okay, sir. Yeah, keep you. digging, Raul. Keep looking for answers. I sure will, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny and Matt. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, Raul. Good to talk to you. On that note, 